What happens to your heartbeat when your sodium dips just a little? Could a routine low salt day slow the very signals that keep you alive? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today, we're looking at new research showing how low sodium can disrupt your heart's electrical rhythm, especially if you take rhythm control drugs that block sodium channels. I'm Alara Skye. This matters because sodium isn't just about fluid retention or blood pressure. It's an essential electrolyte for fluid balance, nerve signaling, muscle contraction, and the coordinated conduction that times every beat. Even small drops in blood sodium can slow or scramble those signals. The centerpiece is a Virginia Tech study on flecainide, a common class I see antiarrhythmic. Researchers asked a simple question with big consequences. If you're already slowing sodium entry into heart cells with a drug, what happens when your blood sodium also runs low? They found a multiplied effect. Your heart's signal begins when sodium rushes into cells, driven by a gradient between the outside and inside of each cell. Hyponatremia weakens that gradient. Add flecainide on top, and conduction slows far more than either factor alone. You see it on an electrocardiogram as a longer QRS duration, which means electrical activation is taking longer to sweep across your ventricles. Mechanistically, the team explored a faptic coupling, how neighboring heart cells pass current through tight spaces called the paranexus. That microenvironment is rich in sodium channels and exquisitely sensitive to the balance of ions in the surrounding fluid. When local sodium is low, the supportive electrical field weakens. Combine that with sodium channel blockade and conduction bogs down. They also probed potassium currents, which reset your electrical baseline between beats. Blocking those currents blunted the heart's sensitivity to low sodium during flecainide use, suggesting both a faptic coupling and potassium handling shape how hyponatremia slows conduction under drug exposure. Critically, the slowdown was reversible. When researchers restored sodium to the normal range, conduction speed and QRS duration returned to baseline. That points to a temporary functional problem from electrolyte imbalance, not permanent damage. So who needs to listen closely? Anyone on sodium channel blockers, like flecainide, because common triggers of hyponatremia can quietly stack up. Diuretics, excessive water intake, and acute illness. If you're in that group, a low sodium day isn't trivial. It can push conduction into a risky zone. This dovetails with a broader rethink on blanket salt restriction. For years, advice defaulted to less salt for heart health. But in heart failure, recent analyses haven't shown consistent benefits from strict limits. Some reviews report no clear reductions in hospitalization or symptoms. And one large international trial found no advantage to pushing intake under 1,500 milligrams a day. If anything, all-cause deaths were slightly higher in the low-sodium arm compared to standard guidance. There's also the hormonal backlash. Drive sodium too low, and you can raise renin, aldosterone, and cortisol. That combination promotes fluid retention, higher blood pressure, inflammation, insulin resistance, and tissue breakdown. Exactly the physiology you're trying to avoid. A more useful lens is balance, not absolutism. Sodium initiates each depolarization. Potassium restores the baseline so the next beat can occur. If your sodium to potassium ratio skews, rhythm and conduction efficiency suffer. Modern diets often invert the ideal, delivering far more sodium than potassium, mostly from refined, packaged, and restaurant foods. Over 70% of dietary sodium comes from industrial salt, about 97.5% sodium chloride, stripped of natural trace minerals like potassium and magnesium. That makes it easy to overshoot sodium while undershooting potassium, a pattern linked to a wide range of chronic problems. Correcting the ratio starts with food. Potassium-rich choices include spinach, beet greens, broccoli, winter squash, tomatoes, carrots, oranges, cantaloupe, coconut water, grass-fed yogurt, kefir, and Swiss chard. Replacing refined table salt with natural salts, such as pink Himalayan or quality sea salt, raises your trace mineral intake. 
pink Himalayan salt contains substantially more potassium than standard iodized table salt. How much sodium is actually workable for most adults? Around 3,500 milligrams per day, especially when it comes from unprocessed, mineral-rich sources and is balanced by adequate potassium. That's higher than the American Heart Association's 2,300 milligram limit and well above their ideal 1,500 milligrams. Yet it supports healthy fluid balance, nerve function, and heartbeat timing when paired with robust potassium intake. For potassium targets, aim for at least 3,400 milligrams daily. For men and 2,600 milligrams for women with 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams, often considered ideal for cardiovascular support. Hitting those ranges through whole foods makes it easier to stabilize your sodium to potassium ratio without chasing numbers. If you're taking flecainide or another sodium channel blocker, keep an eye on triggers that drop sodium below normal. Diuretics, stomach bugs, or overhydration can nudge you into hyponatremia and magnify drug effects on conduction. Restoring sodium to the normal range resolves the slowdown. The study confirmed reversibility. A quick recap through common questions helps lock this in. Yes, low sodium can cause problems because it undercuts the electrical impulses that coordinate your heartbeat and muscles. If you're on sodium channel blockers, low sodium makes those drugs act more strongly, delaying conduction further. No, all salts are not the same. Refined table salt is nearly pure sodium chloride, while natural salts carry more potassium and magnesium that support overall balance. And for daily intake, most people do well, around 3,500 milligrams of sodium when paired with high potassium from whole foods. Here's your practical challenge. Over the next week, track your sodium sources and deliberately raise your potassium from foods like leafy greens, squash, tomatoes, citrus, and cultured dairy. If you're using refined table salt, swap to a natural salt. If you're on a sodium channel blocker, Review your recent intake and hydration to avoid low sodium dips that could slow conduction. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.